Hello friends, my name is Sumit Sarda and uh, we are here to learn financial reporting. <coughs> uh, so, what exactly uh, are we going to cover it over here and how exactly are we going to move over here? The first thing that we are going to learn will be about accounting standards and then we will move with other chapters. Okay? So, the lectures that I am going to uh, like uh, the lectures are going to be arranged in this pattern. First, we learn all the accounting standards. Accounting standards are not going to cover certain standards related to amalgamation, related to consolidation, related to joint venture, related to associate. Okay? So, I will try my best to cover the revision as fast as I can and to cover the maximum number of topics that can be done with all concepts being absolutely clear as possible. Okay? So, that uh, at by the end of the class you are thorough with the concepts and uh, it will be really helpful for your exam, for the coming exam. Okay? So, the first thing we will start with is accounting standards as the name is introduction to accounting standards. Okay? <coughs> So, why do we need the accounting standard? First point is why do we need the accounting standard? It is basically required by the members of ICEI. Now, why do they need that? They need it for auditing purpose. Now, what is they, what do they do in the auditing? They try to verify whether the books of accounts have been maintained as per the accounting standards. Now, why is this needed? Uh, so that all over India, whichever books are being made, whosoever are making the books, uh, their books of accounts should be at par should be comparable with each other. So, that is the reason there are certain set of principles that have been made which are uniform which are to be followed by the people all over the India by companies all over the India by persons I should say as per income tax by all over India. Okay, nothing to do with income tax the definition of persons is what I am talking about. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is the reason why accounting standards have been made. But over the period we have seen that accounting standards which was supposed to be used only for auditing purpose by the members of ICEI, who are the members, the chartered accountants, what you are going to be in future. So, uh, the members are supposed to audit, but now over the period the requirements of auditing like this part has moved towards accounting now. We have seen Companies Act 2013 talking about in accounting. We have seen Income Tax Act as well talking about accounting, but Income Tax Act talks about accounting through ICDS and when we talk about Companies Act, Companies Act talks about this accounting using Companies Accounting Standard Rules. Okay? Now, basically these rules are in two set 2006, 2016 and we have seen companies Indian accounting standards as well rules <coughs> turning up under the Companies Act. So, how exactly do we move ahead? This ICDS I am not going to talk about, but the other three aspects we have to cover over here. <coughs> so, let me start the first thing why we needed accounting standards I have told them. Now, why the accounting, how do we, these accounting standards have an impact in auditing in uh, accounting both purpose. These accounting standards <coughs> need to be divided into two parts first. For companies and for other than companies. Okay? For companies, we need to split these accounting standards again into two parts. AS rules 2006-2016, IND AS rules 2016. Other than companies, nothing like this as such. Okay? Now, what? why are we trying to split all this? See what happened was, uh, ICAI is the one who is supposed to draft the accounting standards and finalize the accounting standard, but over the period, Government has uh, like what uh, what used to happen is the accounting standard that were framed by ICI was something that was to be followed by all the people over India. But over the period, government has slowly transferred these rights from ICI to an independent body for companies under MCA Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So Ministry of Corporate Affairs has a body named. NACAS National Accounting <coughs> National Accounting um, National Advisory Committee on Accounting Standards. Sorry, National Advisory Committee on Accounting Standards, who are supposed to finalize the accounting standard that are applicable that will be applicable to 
companies. Now these accounting standards are drafted by members of ICA. Like ICA president is supposed to sign and draft it. But the finalization whether it is applicable to companies or not is something that is approved by NACAS. Okay. When we talk about Indian accounting standards 2016, the power has been given to NFRA, Financial Regulatory Accounting Standards. Now, NFRA is yet to be established till date as we are recording. Right now, the powers are with NACAS as well. Yeah, like NACAS is the one who is actually taking care of the complete thing. Okay. Other than companies, it is ICAI, what, whatever ICAI said is final and that's what everyone has to follow. Okay, so uh, accounting standards, accounting standards basically being splitted into three parts. One, 2006, we, where, where we are talking about accounting standards. Second, we are talking about other than companies for whom it is the basic accounting standard that we are studying. We don't see any difference as such when we talk about accounting standard rules and accounting standards. Okay, and then there is Indian accounting standards, something which most of the students are right now worried about that what exactly does Indian accounting standard talks about. Don't worry my friends, it is very easy. I uh, Let me tell you, just trust me and move ahead with my classes. Okay, yeah. So this is how we are going to study. Now, when I talk about all these things, two companies, to in uh, some big companies, Indian accounting standard, we will talk about this part a bit later and other than companies. How exactly do you think there are so many accounting standards, even in CA inter you may have studied, we started from AS1, we went up to AS32, but we cancelled certain accounting standards and now it is up to AS29. <coughs> okay. From AS1 to AS29, there are two numbers that we haven't seen as such, AS8, we don't have an AS8 anymore, we don't have an AS6 anymore. So of 29, if I leave these two, we have 27 standard that we have to study. Of the 27 standards, can we make all the 27 standards applicable to all the companies all over India? Now why do we need that uniformity so that the stakeholders are well informed? Now where are the stakeholders, where do you see the major stakeholders? See, when I talk about small companies or small people, like if you uh, go to some grocery store, now grocery store is not something like the next door grocery store uh, beside my home, let's say uh, somewhere backside, is not something that is owned by Tata's and Villas. Okay, so it is just owned by a small proprietary concern. He is earning in lakhs, uh, like uh, he has a turnover in lakhs, earning in thousands. He is happy with his shop. Okay, now this person, if I ask him that who is your stakeholder? Now he doesn't have any stakeholder as such. So not much information is required about his concern. But when we talk about some big companies, some big companies like we have talked about Tata's, we are talking about Birla's, a lot of information is required because there are crows of stakeholders. There are crows of stakeholders. There are shareholders, there are creditors, there are debtors. Everyone is worried about the credit worthiness. Tata's and Birla's have milled up their brand name. But what about a company, let's say ABC Limited standing up today with a 100 crore ka turnover? Who knows the company? So how do are we going to study? We are going to study such companies on the basis of accounting standard. Now we know we need lots of disclosures. How will we get so many disclosures? These disclosures can be taken with the help of accounting standards. Okay. So we are going we study these accounting standards to inform the stakeholder. But where there are major stakeholders. So what I am telling you from this we get an inference that. Smaller companies don't have much stakeholders. Bigger companies have many, many stakeholders. Smaller people don't have much stakeholders. Big people have lots of stakeholders. So big companies need more disclosures. Small companies don't need that much disclosure. We don't want small companies to follow all the accounting standards. So when I talk about the compliance of accounting standard, whether company is required to comply accounting standards or not. Uh, company, why am I talking about company? I must talk about uh, concerns. We are talking about both companies and other than companies from uh, above picture as well. Okay. <clears throat> when I talk about compliance of accounting standards, compliance of accounting standards are for have been splitted into three parts, small, okay, medium and really giant enterprises. There is no such name, small, medium and giant. It is just a way that I am uh, presenting the data in front of you, nothing else. Okay. Now, first part is who is giant? 
Now, he is someone who I believe is supposedly to be a company, it will be a company. Why? When I read so many points uh, related to who is giant, we call them level 1 enterprise, accounting standard calls them level 1 enterprise. Now, who are these level 1 enterprises? Listed companies. So, I know that they are companies. So, they need to follow companies the rules 2006 companies accounting standard rules 2006 hash 2016. Process of being listed, they have applied they have made an application that we want to get listed. Financial institutes, now we have non-banking financial companies. Okay. We have uh, venture capitalist, we have angel investors, they are all financial institutes. Okay. There are banking companies, we have ICICI, we have IDBI, we have banking companies, we have insurance companies. So, again and again the word is company. Then someone with turnover greater than or equal to 50 crores, 50 crores what do I mean by turnover? Sales, the primary source of income of the company. Someone with public deposits, mind my words public deposits greater than or equal to 10 crores, someone whose deposits are more than 10 crores. Okay? So, these are the people who are supposed to be level 1 enterprise and they are required to follow all the accounting standards, they do not have any option, they have to follow all the accounting standards. Now, we talk about medium enterprises, level 2 enterprises, someone whose turnover is greater than 1 crore and public deposits greater than 1 crore or or okay, any of the conditions, any of the conditions is supposed to be a medium sized enterprise, level 2 enterprise. They have been given certain relaxations, there are certain points they do not need to follow and certain accounting standard they do not need to follow. Now, there are two points, some accounting standards you do not need to follow, some accounting standard you need to follow with certain relaxations. Like if I talk about AS20 earnings per share you do not need to give detail about diluted earnings per share. So, this is a relaxation that has been given to you. Okay. We have a complete list in our notes, do not worry, I will give I'll get back with the notes and everything, I am just summarizing the whole thing, what about uh, what all we are going to cover in the introduction to accounting standards. And then there are level 3, we call them others, other than any of these conditions, those who do not satisfy any of these conditions that have been given to us. My friend, just keep one point more in mind, any holding company or subsidiary of any one of them is also considered to be a level 1 enterprise. That means that if you are an owner of a company with 100 crore turnover, you are the owner of the company with 100 crore turnover and your individual balance sheet shows no income other than the dividend income from such company. Okay. And you I mean, uh, from you I mean you are supposed to be a company for that. Okay. So, you are A limited let us say, you are A limited and your company the, the is under level 1 enterprise with 100 crore ka turnover. Okay. You do not have any income other than dividend income from such company, you are supposed to be the holding company, this company is supposed to be your subsidiary. If subsidiary falls under level 1 enterprise, you are also a level 1 enterprise. So, any company which is a level 1 enterprise, its holding company is also a level 1 enterprise, its subsidiary is also a level 1 enterprise. Okay. So, whenever I talk about level 1, we are talking about majorly companies and in case of companies, we need to follow companies accounting standard rules 2006. Okay. Now, what about these other than companies? What about these other than companies? They generally fall under the other two categories. Either their turnover is more than 1 crore or their turnover is less than 1 crore or their public deposit is more than 1 crore or less than 1 crore. 
okay they also have the same condition holding company or subsidiary some of you must be having a doubt sir what if there is an associate what if there is a joint venture don't worry associates and joint ventures have not been covered we are only talking about the holding companies and subsidiaries and then other than that who doesn't fall under any of the category they don't have a turnover they are not listed they are not financial institute they are not holding or subsidiary they fall under the last category which are others we generally generally call them small and medium enterprises smes okay you have also presented them as msme micro small and medium enterprises they can also fall under the level 2 category again there are certain relaxations and certain exemptions okay if you open the notes we have a complete list where we'll show which standards are applicable to whom so if we see cfs is cash flow statement cash flow statement is something that is not required to be presented by level 2 and level 3 only level 1 is required to present cash flow statement cr means certain relaxations that have been given in case of leases in case of earnings per share under leases finance lease is something that is not required to be presented by level 2 and level 3 enterprises level 1 doesn't have any such exemptions now this if required means if you are required to present interim report you have to follow such standard so the standard is exempt by itself it is a special standard when we are going to study such standard we are going to discuss the same okay so that's what the concept is all about okay okay so accounting standards who is uh, required to follow these accounting standard the members of icai what do they need that for attestation function or audit auditing purpose okay i hope you have got an idea accounting standards accounting standard has been bought by icai for whom for their members for attestation function but over the period it has been accepted by other acts other acts means companies act has accepted it companies act has given the authority to nakas nakas has built companies accounting standard rule 2006 which has approved the standards to be followed by the companies now the standards cannot be followed randomly by each and every company or other than company so we have split it them into three parts level 1 enterprise level 2 level 3 we know who all comes under the level 1 enterprise they are either listed or in the process of listing financial institute banks or my insurance companies okay turnover more than 50 crore deposits more than 10 crore or their holding or subsidiary if none of the condition is satisfied but if the turnover or public deposit is more than 1 crore they are supposed to be level 2 enterprises they are holding their subsidiary if none of the conditions is satisfied we call them level 3 enterprises okay so sir the next doubt you have told us that what the accounting standards are all about you have told me who is applicable who is not is applicable still there is a very big doubt do we are we going to apply these accounting standard to each tom dick and harry that we are going to find on the way that means that if i go to any temple if i go to any church if i go to any trust if i go to any cooperative society am i going to apply accounting standard to them as well no it is not like that the basic definition of who is supposed who is required to follow accounting standards is those who are either engaged in trading or manufacturing or commercial activity in full or part part will do as well so either you are trading so when i enter into big bazaar i know they are trading they are carrying out the work of purchasing goods and selling goods as well this is trading so they are required to follow accounting standards when i enter into tata automobiles i know they are manufacturing the cars over there they are the manufacturers they are required to follow accounting standards so wherever we see business when i talk about pwc when i talk about deloitte when i talk about kpmg when i talk about ernst and young when i talk about any ca firm i know they are providing commercial activity it is a commercial activity of giving service of providing consultancy or audit to the client we are required to follow accounting standard it is applicable to us as well in our accounting as well 
even if there is part of such activity will also do. Have you heard about the brand being human? A brand endorsed by Salman Khan. It is supposed to be an NGO, non-governmental organization. What do they do? They are, collect, they are selling clothes and whatever money that is collected is being used for the education of poor or for the health and care of the poor, old people and children. For the poor society. There is no profit that is being earned. But my question is, isn't there any trading activity? Yes, they are carrying out a trading activity and that is the reason I'll tell you that they are required to follow accounting standards. They will be required to follow accounting standards. Sir, what about the temples? What about the church? Whenever we enter into the temple, sometimes in the name of God, we are paying 50 or 100 rupees, dan or dakshina. So, are they also required to follow accounting standards? Is this any trading activity? Is this any commercial activity? Is this any manufacturing activity? No, my friend, you are just giving it in the form of donation. It is none of the activities that are being carried out. So, such temples, such church are not required to follow any of the accounting standards unless the temple has a shop that has been inbuilt out of the temple which sells let us say clothes of God, let us say some toys or photos of God, let us say some uh, 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 we can like anything anything related to God it is selling anything and they say that whatever money is being generated will be utilized for the construction and renovation of the show, of the temple. No my friend accounting standard now will be applicable, why part of it. Now there is a trading activity and even if a part of trading activity is there, we are going to apply accounting standard to the whole organization, to the whole organization, keep this in mind. So, it will be applicable to cooperative society as well, if there is a part of trading activity or part of manufacturing activity, any part of it will also lead to accounting standard being applicable. That means, a cooperative society that has been made for uh, these village people uh, who basically the, we talk about the craftsmen, uh, a company that turns up and tell them that whatever goods you are going to produce, we will uh, see to it that these, these are they are sold in the city or the, we, maybe we will sell them online so that a huge amount is collected, it will be distributed amongst you guys. So, you have made a cooperative society, you have made a trust, but you are carrying out a trading activity. Have you heard about the Mumbai Dabbawalas? Now, there are various people from the society have turned up coming together providing uh, lunch service to the people living in Mumbai, staying in Mumbai, working in offices, they will go there, leave their tiffins at their home, uh, at their offices and then collect and leave them back home as well. They are working whatever they are earning, distributing among, among themselves as well, but there is a commercial activity, there is a commercial activity. Have you heard about Amul? Amul has brought the Gujarat various uh, milk producers together into one cooperative society. Why compete with each other? Let us come together and sell uh, the milk together as a big, bigger foundation. My friend, again there is a commercial activity. Accounting standard will be applicable. So, whatever I am talking about over here, accounting standard applicability will be there. Okay? So, I hope now you have an idea when accounting standards are applicable. We have discussed earlier to whom accounting standards are applicable. We know what accounting standards have been made for. They are required for auditing purpose, but what do we audit with accounting standards? Are we, are we going to check each and every page for the accounting standards to be verified? Now, my friend. As per accounting standards, if I talk in terms of financial reporting, we have to take care of general purpose financial statements. What are general purpose financial statements? There is a balance sheet, there is a PNL, there is a cash flow statement if applicable and there are notes to accounts. When I talk about companies rules, you are supposed to account as per accounting standards. This is something that is not written under accounting standard book. This is something that NACAS has told the companies to do. Okay. 
accounting standards only want the accounting standard to be used for auditing purpose. How the accounting should be done in 11th and 12th maybe you have heard generally accepted accounting principle 13 principles were read materiality accrual there were various concepts. On those concepts accounting is done verification is done as per accounting standards. Okay. So, these are the only four statements that we are going to attest uh, we are going to check whether they are correct or not as per the accounting standards. So, the accounting standards are basically applicable only to these four standards these four places general purpose financial statement is what we call them. Now, <coughs> when I talk about now I am not going to talk about companies rules 2006 anymore or 2016 anymore because there you have to account as per accounting standards. So, these four statements come out of the picture then ok. The point is what if anyone does not follow such accounting standards can be someone may refuse to follow such accounting standards. Sir, why will anyone refuse to follow the accounting standard? Why will anyone have any problem in following such accounting standards? Maybe it does not make sense, maybe it, maybe it is a cost related way, huge cost related activity or maybe their company does not follow such system, can be. Look, I will give you an example. Now, suppose this is a go down ok and this is the gate of the go down. You sell a product, only single product is that what you are selling you purchase the product and you collected you started collecting the product in the go down. So, now this is the place where you are going to collect the product you are not going to start placing in the front of the door itself what you will start is from the end side ok. Now, the product is collected to a huge pile one of the customer comes in to buy one of the product now which one are you going to sell first this one or the one in the last corner it is very obvious that I am going to sell this one. Now, if this one is sold I can say that inventory accounting is last in first out the one that enters the last is the first that has been sold. So, the management follows last in first out basis of inventory valuation am I correct ok. Now, they have made their books of accounts as per the standard uh, as per this policy of last in first out. Now, in CA inter we had read that LIFO is not permitted. The auditor checks the books and he says Are yaar, how come he have followed last in first out method. Now, he sees that last in first out has been followed he goes to the management he says you have followed last in first out this is not allowed as per AS2. Now, management now think of the management management of small companies will not talk about big companies big companies are required to follow uh, Indian accounting standard and company rules they need chartered accountants to be the accountant as well. For small and medium enterprises if I talk about now they will be having ER big companies will be having ERP. So, they do not even need this system of last in first out and all. Now, when I talk about the companies management will have accountant who is going to have a degree let us say of BCom or maybe BBA or BCA or maybe he does not even have a degree he just went to any certified course of tally and he started accounting for the same. Now, the management asks you ok what is accounting standard something on which on the basis of which order uh, uh, attestation is done otherwise we are not going to attest ok. Now, the management says ok what does your accounting standard say what do we need to follow management will ask you obviously management does not know now accounting accounting standard says that management is supposed to comply with the same. If the management does not comply auditor is the someone who will qualify the report. Management to comply with the same must first know what accounting standard talks all about now their accountant sitting in their office in BCom, in BBA, BCA maybe this degrees are something even you have with you have you studied accounting standards over there. There is no such thing as accounting standards even the tally certification course that you go no one is going to teach you accounting standards over there you do not know accounting standards. So, now what is the solution to the same the management is going to ask CA only uh, what is what does your accounting standard say now the CA says they go uh, as per your inventory method that you are following the last inventory went out you have removed it the stock shows that the first one that entered into the cost is still in the inventory 
we don't allow such accounting system to be followed, you will have to change it either to first in first out or weighted average. Management says I have sold the last unit, why will I change my method? Well, because accounting standard does not follow. Practically management will refuse, management will say I, why will I change my system? I will be the one who will have the problem with this. Now, suppose if this is a medicine company, every medicine has a tag that has been written on it. So, the inventory is going to be valued on the basis of the tags that are remaining in the godown. Management will refuse to follow first in first out or weighted average. Now, this is the point at which management is not accepting what accounting standard is supposed to say. Remember my friend, this is the point at which auditor is only going to qualify the report. Auditor's duty is only to check whether accounting standard have been followed or not. If not followed, he is supposed to qualify the report. <coughs> he is supposed to give his opinion on the same. But for the management to comply with the accounting standard, remember they are going to ask you only. Tell me what the accounting standard tells about. Management is not aware with the what accounting standard tells about unless they are required to account for the same as per AS. And such accounting as per AS required is done only in companies because companies have companies rule, accounting standard rules 2006 or 2016 that they are required to follow. Nakas has made it mandatory. They always tell them you will have to follow this. If you do not follow, penalty on you. Okay, so, that is what it is all about. Sometimes it may so happen that if it is not followed, if it is not followed, auditor will qualify the report. Now, what does the qualification include? What will the qualification include? Reason for qualification. What should be the correct treatment? as per auditor and financial impact. So, these are the three things that the auditor will have to specify. Okay? So, this is a rough idea of what the standard all talks about. Some students will still have a doubt, they are saying that sir, companies accounting standard rule 2006 given by MCA has been specified under Companies Act 2013. Companies Act 2013 itself also talks about certain accounting treatments like we have studied in Schedule 2 depreciation. Sir, what if Act says something which is something dot not said by accounting standards? What if there is a conflict between Act and accounting standards? Okay. All the acts prevail over accounting standard. Remember, all the acts prevail over accounting standard. But <coughs> our accounting standards, accounting uh, sorry, our Companies Act has clearly specified in Schedule 3 that accounting standards or Indian accounting standards will prevail over Schedule 3 will prevail over schedule 3. Now, because act is saying that accounting standard will prevail over us, we say that accounting standard will prevail over only one thing, schedule 3, nothing else, nothing else. Okay? So, I hope it is clear. <coughs> so, attestation is required for general purpose financial statement. What are general purpose financial statement? Balance sheet, statement of PNL, notes to accounts, cash flow statement. Correct? To whom are the accounting standards followed, <coughs> required to be followed? Once who are engaged in commercial, industrial or business activity. So, if I talk about Tata Reliance, you are into manufacturing activity, AS is required. Deloitte PwC, you are into commercial activity, AS is required. Big Bazaar, you are into trading activity, it is required. <coughs> Being human is again a trading activity, you are required to follow accounting standards. CC Ravi Shankar, Art of Living. I will not enter much into it. Tell me, is Art of Living free? Is it available free of cost? It is not available free of cost. So, since it is not free, we do not call such activities as uh, non-commercial or non-trading activities. Okay, but the point is, uh, the receipt that they are giving you is a donation receipt. Whatever you pay for Art of Living, the receipt that you are getting is a donation receipt. So, donation is something that does not come under commercial trading or any such activity. 
so you can refuse them like accounting standard will not be applicable depend see now uh, art of living also sells certain product as is applicable to them i am just giving you an idea about art of living okay so we'll move ahead we talk about cry organization child rights and you i hope you have heard of the organization as is not applicable to them because there is no commercial trading activity teach india again no commercial activity you can join the organization teach for free to the people you are uh, ready to give free stationery books and all whatever you want to give sai baba temple in shirdi again accounting standards are not applicable no commercial activity being carried out part of it also is, has a commercial activity accounting standard would apply whose duty is to check whether statement is as per as or not it is the auditor who is supposed to check what if the statements are not as per as he will require the management to change as per as and what if the management refuses qualify the report so this is what we have discussed right now what is the scope of accounting standards so we have seen that prevails over only all acts prevail over as as prevails over schedule 3 so that's it that's what it all about compliance with accounting standards whose duty is this to comply with the accounting standard is basically the management who is supposed to comply with the accounting standard but for accounts if we say as per nakas in case of companies as per as others <clears throat> now as cannot be blindly applied to all the uh, enterprises that's why enterprises have been split into three part level 1 level 2 level 3 who are level 1 enterprises we have seen anyone who's listed or in the process of being listed there's one more thing that i forgot to tell you whether outside india as well that means a company having just a branch office in india it is listed in nasdaq it has to be a level 1 enterprise in india as well okay in the process of being listed you have applied for the same you are a banking institute financial institute insurance company a company with turnover more than 50 crore debts exceeding 10 crore you are holding a subsidiary if your turnover is more than 1 crore or debt more than 1 crore you are a level 2 enterprise all others are level 3 enterprises okay always the first one that is defined as level 1 enterprise remember this always the first one who is defined as level 1 enterprise sir what do you mean by this let's see there is an organization named uh, B Limited. Okay, and now B Limited has a holding company with 80% shares, which is A Limited. A Limited also has another uh, company with 70% stake, let's say C Limited. It has an associate with 30% stake SO limited okay now B limited has another company D limited as its subsidiary with 70% stake and C limited has another subsidiary with 100% stake named E limited now B limited qualifies to be a level 1 enterprise let's say a limited qualifies to be a level 2 enterprise c limited qualifies to be a level 2 enterprise e limited qualifies to be a level 3 enterprise d limited qualifies to be a level 3 enterprise associate qualifies to be a level 3 enterprise okay now the first one that is defined as level 1 enterprise first one that is defined as level 1 enterprise that means b limited is the first one that has been defined now I'll start from B limited and then we'll move ahead. I talk about A limited. A limited is a level 2 enterprise. A limited is a level 2 enterprise. Do we need to follow level 2 or do we need to follow level 1? Because when I was studying level 2, I have seen that level 2 is applicable to anyone, it's holding its subsidiary level 2. And when I was studying level 1, it's holding its subsidiary has to follow level 1. That means B says A has to follow level 1, A says B has to follow level 2. That is the reason I said level 1 is the first one that is defined. The first one defined is B limited. Now it is freezed. Level 1 applicability is level 1. Now let's talk about A limited. If anyone has level 1 applicability, we know its holding company is required to follow level 1. 
its subsidiary is required to follow level 1 <coughs> defined and over. Now, I will go into A limited. Now, A limited qualified to be level 2, but we know that it has to follow, it has to maintain books of accounts as per level 1. Is ASO limited required to follow level 1 then? No, it is an associate. So, associates do not come into the ambit, they will continue to follow level 3. Applicability level 3. Now, I look at a limited ka dusra subsidiary which is C limited, A limited is level 2 qualified but applicability is level 1. Since A limited has applicability level 1, C limited also required to follow level 1? No. Try to understand this part well. A limited qualified to be level 2, do not see the applicability, applicability is because of B limited. A limited qualified to be level 2, so its holding and subsidiary is required to follow level 2 as well. So, C limited will be apply level 2. Now, it did not, if it was qualified to be level 3 suppose, still it is required to follow level 2, because A limited is level 2 enterprise. Okay, so, I will change its qualification to level 3. Now, when I talk about E limited, E limited qualifies to be level 3, but applicability comes from its holding company. Applicability of holding company C limited comes uh, seems to be level 3, level 3. So, we are talking about holding subsidiary, but E limited has the ultimate holding company being A limited. A limited qualifies to be level 2. So, applicability turns out to be level 2. So, this is what you need to remember. What is the thing that is first defined? I hope it is clear. Okay. So, we will move ahead. <coughs> okay, there is one more doubt. Sir, in the year 2016-2017, I had a turnover of 36 crores. So, I know I am a level 2 enterprise. In the year 2017-2018, 1st October 2017, turnover till date turned out to be 53 crores. Am I a level 1 enterprise in the year 17-18 or am I a level 2 enterprise? Okay. So, you are a level 2 enterprise in the year 16-17. We will not talk about 16, 17 right now. We will talk about 17, 18. The turnover has to be seen for the last audited balance sheet. We do not see it in the current year. We see it in the last audited balance sheet. So, in the last audited balance sheet for the year 17, 18 that we have available, it is the previous year's 36 crores. So, in the year 17, 18, I am a level 2 enterprise and not level 1 enterprise. But in the year 18-19, I will be a level 1 enterprise. Clear? Okay. Sir, how long do you think I will remain a level 1 enterprise? What I mean to say is, in the year 18-19, my turnover again dropped to be 17 CR. Am I still a level 1 enterprise? See what I have to see is my last audited balance sheet. So, in the year 18, 19 I have seen that my last audited balance sheet, uh, I was a level 1 enterprise. So, I will continue to be a level 1 enterprise in the year 18, 19. That means, level 1 enterprise became applicable in 18, 19. Now, in the year 19, 20, I need to be a level 1 enterprise. I need to be a level 1 enterprise. Whenever you are qualify for a particular level, either level 1 or level 2, you need to continue that for at least one more year, even if you cease to be such enterprise. Even if you cease to be such enterprise. Let me write certain years and then explain it to you. Now, suppose I will talk about level 1. 
in the year 2016 you did not qualify to be a level 1 enterprise as per I will talk about turnover. Okay. So, turnover was uh, let us say 5 crore, then it turned out to be 53 crore, then it turned out to be 17 crore, then it turned out to be 30 crore. I am checking for the enterprise level. 2016 is the first year or of, of our operation. So, qualification is not there in the year 2016 or qualification is for level 2 enterprise in 2016 more than 1 crore. It is level 1 enterprise in 2017, level 2 again in 2018 and level 2 in 2019. But when I talk about applicability, so first year well and fine we will report as per level 2. 2017 because the last year turnover was uh, as per level 2 enterprise will continue to be a level 2 enterprise. 2018 last year turnover is more than 50 crore will be a level 1 enterprise. 2019 last year turnover is less than 50 crore but because we were level 1 enterprise in the previous year at least for one more year we are supposed to be a level 1 enterprise. That means in the year 2020 if my turnover is only 1 CR that makes me a level 2 enterprise. I will report also as per level 2 enterprise because I was supposed to follow this level 1 compliance only for 1 year. So, it will be at least 1 year. We have we need to comply at least 1 year. Now, why is this so? Once you are a level 1 enterprise you are going to report as per level 1 and once the level 1 enterprise report has been made available to the stakeholders they expect that the same compliance is going to be followed next year. But next year when you come to know that the level 1 applicability is not available, it is not, it is not applicable to you. Now, we are going to again report level 1 and we are going to give a comment to the organizations that we are no more a level 1 organization. From next year we are not going to give a level 1 and organizational report. So, this is something that is requ required to be reported to the stakeholder. That is the reason for at least one more financial year we need to continue. Okay, this is about turnover. What about deposits? Deposits is has a totally different story. Deposit is during the year. We don't see previous year. <coughs> so, if the deposit is let's say eleven CR, <coughs> seven CR, two CR, twenty CR. So, if I talk about the qualification, so it is level 1, <coughs> level 2, level 2, level 1 and when I talk about applicability, level 1 in the first year itself, at least one year we need to continue that is why level 1 in the year 2017, level 2 in 2018, level 1 again in 2019 during the year if your deposits increase the minimum limit that has been given to you, uh, you are required to follow the level 1 enterprise. Sir, in the year 2019, first half of the year our uh, deposits boosted above 10 crore, but then it reduced below 10 crore. So, are we a level 1 or level 2 enterprise? If the turnover was any time during the period, uh, uh, if the public deposits were more than 10 crore, any time during the period you are a level 1 enterprise. So, when I talk about public deposits, we see it during the year, where it is public deposit any time during the year. So, you know, even if it is reduced, you are a level 1 enterprise or level 2 as the case may be. Sir, what will the turnover include? <coughs> like, my company basically still uh, deals in garments, we buy and sell clothes. So, our turnover is uh, 20 lakh, but uh, we have lot of uh, revenue cash flow available with us uh, because of our ancestors over the period we have uh, earned so much of cash that we have deposited into bank 
and we are earning a ransom interest and dividend uh, through various equity companies which turns out to be 20 crore. Our primary business is cloths. We are earning 20 to 30 lakh from it, but dividend and interest income we earn in 20 crores. So, sir, are we a level 3 enterprise or a level 2 enterprise? What will you consider for the turnover? Will you include 20 lakh plus 20 crore or you will only check 20 lakh? Remember, other income is not part of turnover. Okay, uh, You cannot see it over here, but it is in your notes. The second point, turnover does not include other income. Okay, okay so we will move ahead. PQR limited will look at certain questions with turnover of 35 lakhs and borrowing 10 lakh rupees at the end of the relevant year. Want to avail the exemptions available. So, what are the exemptions available? We have already seen it is as per the list. I am not going to go through the same right now. We will look at next question. Ganga Kaveri project was incorporated on 1st July 2002. During the year ending 31st March 2003, there was no manufacturing and trading activity. Okay, you are incorporated, but there has been no manufacturing or trading activity except raising share capital, purchase land, acquisition of machine, construction of factory. Therefore, chief accountant of the company content that relevant year there is no need to prepare the statement of PNL. See, if you are supposed to do a commercial activity, no one is saying that the commercial activity should start. Your manufacturing activity is supposed to start. If you are into such activities, irrespective of the fact whether the activities have been started or not, since you are incorporated, you are required to for comply with the standards and you are required to for prepare all such statements. Okay, So, we will move ahead and we will look at the a step ahead. I told you there is a company's Indian Accounting Standard Rules 2016. Now, who are the ones to whom this is applicable? Let us see. International Financial Reporting System. I hope you have read about this. This is IFRS. Something that has been provided by a European body. This is IASB, International St Accounting Standards Board. Now, IASB has prepared certain standards which are very flexible and required to be adopted. They are moving all around the world requesting the government, the organizations, please follow accounting standards in international accounting standards. Why is this needed and what was the reason for it coming up? See, we have seen lots of scams even related to stock exchange in India. Where did the concept of stock exchange turn up from? The concept of stock exchange basically came from US. The first place where listing took place, you can ask money from the people, get your company listed, Ask, let the people invest, give them the income in the form of dividend and let the share price increase. Lots of people thought that the idea is very good. We will ask for the people. The only thing that we need to show is profits. We can do something that we call as window framing. So, window framing will be done. We will uh, show them very huge profits. At the end, even if the company uh, is uh, like, at the end company, uh, all money is gone, everything is lost, what is going from our pocket? We have taken the money from the people. There were no accounting standard at that time and lots of such scams took place. We talk about big four, there were lots of such biggies. But then over the period because of these frauds and scams, we finally ultimately it fall down to four. There were big five after en Enron scam, it was reduced by one more big four, uh, now we know. So the point is international financial reporting system, uh, there was a body uh, that was made uh, like uh, the Securities Commission of UI, United States came up with the law, a very stringent standard body with, uh, we know such standard as US GAAP. It is very stringent and a law like uh, standard body that is made. It is, it says that if you have to follow this, you will have to comply it in this pattern only. You cannot follow any other thing. <coughs> There were lots of companies around the world who were getting themselves listed in USA. Now we talk about globalization, the very small issue with globalization is, suppose you are sitting in India and you want to do business all over the world. In India, you have to make your books of accounts as per accounting standard because companies act says so. Now when I go to US, their law says that you will have to follow US gap and as per US gap, you will have to follow uh, prepare your books of accounts. Now, I have to prepare two sets of books of accounts 
and again such books of accounts I am not earning anything, I am earning from my business, but I am wasting my money in just maintaining books of accounts. So why follow multiple accounting standards, so many countries around the world, each country we are going to follow their accounting standard, we are only going to end up making just books of accounts and making such a huge uh, cost investment over them, how are we going to earn profits? So a body turned up, they asked, they went around the world and they told them let's follow US gap all over the world. The United States has more enemies than any of the countries around the world. So most of the people firstly refused why should we follow US gap, we are not going to follow US gap. You needed a separate body who had nothing to do with US. So first the setup was removed from United States, they came to Europe. They set up a new body named International Accounting Standard Board. They met all the governments around the world, economists around the world, businessmen around the world, how the accounting standard should be if they are supposed to be par, at par around the world, not just one country. And after a, a detailed study with all of them, they came up with a very flexible, I am not telling you a very legitimate, a very flexible standard which we know as International Financial Reporting Standards. International Financial Reporting Standards, we see international accounting standards in them. We see certain international financial reporting uh, standards in them, we see certain SICs in them and we see some SRC, SRIC, uh, wait a minute, IFRIC in them, okay, IFRIC in them. So all of them are standard numbers that come under international financial reporting standard. What is the difference? The first set of standard that were made is uh, are under IS, IS 1, 2, 3. Most of them have been eliminated, now we have 1, 2, 7, there are lots of standards that are available. Now you have seen certain there are guidance notes that are applicable under accounting standards in India. So now whenever these standards needed any such guidance note, they were given in the name of SIC. Over the period the standards were amended and now the latest amended standards, whatever IAS have been amended and you came up with the new standards are known by the numbers IFRS 1, 2, 3, 4. And any guidance required to them is known as IFRIC. So that is what the meaning is. So International Financial Reporting Standards has four set of standard numbers that goes on. We have the standard numbers in front of us and uh, IFRS, IAS, SIC and IFRIC. Okay. Now they came up with the International Accounting Standard and now they started going to each and every country, please accept this, please accept this. Most of the countries accepted them as it is and most of them converged towards them with carve outs. India is amongst one of them who converged into them with carve outs. That means Indian accounting standards are someone that are inspired by international accounting standard. We are not 100% international accounting standard but as per our economy we have changed, we have certain points we have not accepted and the points we have not accepted are known as carve outs. I hope the meanings and terminologies are clear. Now when we talk about the numbers, the numbers are supposed to be the same. Okay, uh, forget the IFRS series for some place, IAS 1, we have the corresponding standard, IndiaS 1. So the numbers have changed. 2 is inventory, IndiaS 2, IAS 7 is cash flow, IndiaS 7 is cash flow. Now when we talk about the latest standards in our Indian accounting standard, the number is 101, 102, 103, what we call them as IFRS 123. So the last digit is the same. Okay. The IFRIC and SIC is something we don't see in Indian accounting standard because they have been incorporated under the respective Indian accounting standard for which such IFRIC and SIC were written. There are still certain IFRS not accepted, 15 revenue recognition and then there is 16 leases uh, which has not been accepted in India till now. The corresponding earlier standard numbers, okay, IS 11 construction contracts, IS 18, okay. Uh, revenue recognition is something that we are still studying under the Indian accounting standard. So we are going to see such changes as well. I believe this reason for coming change should be a motivation for you to clear your exam immediately. Otherwise you will have to standard uh, study the new standard again. Already you have studying accounting standard. Now you have to study Indian accounting standard. Now Indian accounting standard will also make changes in themselves. So earlier you clear your exams more better, more faster, uh, you don't need to learn such things anymore. Still you cannot run away with them, when you talk about audit, when you are going to enter into audits for your clients, you need to give advice as per the Indian accounting standards. 
so you will have to study it. If you enter into job, they are going to give you I believe jobs mostly related to Indian accounting standard you will have to study it. So, as I told you India we have converged to accounting Indian uh, international accounting standard with some differences. The date the timeline on which we converged starts from 1st April 15, 16th Feb we gave a notification in the official gazette that there are companies who are required to follow Indian accounting standard. So, remember only companies which accounting standard Indian accounting standard rules 2016 followed given by NACAS. It was supposed to be given by NFRA, but NFRA is yet to be established, so it has been given by NACAS. First one is voluntary. If you want any accounting standard to like you want on your own, you want Indian accounting standard to be implied to you, applicable to you, you may do so. You may prepare the books of accounts. If you are doing so, prepare comparatives as also as per Indian accounting standards. I do not remember any such company doing such activity other than ICEI. ICEI had voluntarily adopted, ICEI is not a company, but ICEI voluntarily adopted towards Indian accounting standards. First April 16, we made it mandatory whether you are listed or not, irrespective of the fact whether you are listed or not. Remember, we are only talking about companies, not other than companies. If your net worth, now I am not talking about companies, we are talking about net worth. Sir, what do you mean by net worth? Equity and free reserves. Equity and free reserves share capital premium reserves created out of accumulated losses deferred expenditures after deducting sorry revaluation reserve not to be included because not so free reserve audited balance sheet as per audited balance sheet okay well, I will come to that audited balance sheet part later if your turnover is 500 crore or more listed or unlisted irrespective of the fact you are holding your subsidiary or JV or associate all of them Indian accounting standard will be applicable that means if your net worth is more than 500 crore or more applicable to you, your JV, your associate, your holding, your subsidiary. Everyone will have to compulsorily follow Indian accounting standard except there were certain people who were given the exemptions, insurance companies and banking companies. They were told that even if you are any of the subsidiary JV associate, no need to follow. Accounting standards are not, if we have, right now we are exempting you from Indian accounting standards. Even they were in the ambit, we are going to see later. Uh, that is how it starts. Sir, turnover, when we are talking about accounting standards, you told us that the turnover is as per last audited balance sheet public deposit during the year. Now, net worth, when do we have to see? My friend, you have to see the last audited balance sheet, last, last audited balance sheet that is available to you, that is available to you on 1st April 2016. Now, this is a very tricky statement. 1st April 2016, last audited balance sheet is supposed to be 31st March 2016. Now, how can you make it applicable, available on 1st April 2016 only and that too audited? So, last audited balance sheet is going to be 31st March 2015. So, now suppose on this date the turnover is 460 CR. Now, the so India is not applicable right now, 1st April 16, it is not applicable. 31st March 2016, I believe it will be available till let us say June 16, it is 513 CR. So, applicable, simple, clear concept. Okay. Sir, let us see a reverse scenario, 513 CR on 31st March 2015 and 460 CR, it reduced because we made losses during the year. Is Indian accounting standard applicable? But on 1st April 2016, which is the last audited balance sheet that is available, 31st March 2015, what is the turnover? 513 crore. Is Indian accounting standard applicable? Yes, sir. Once applicable, always applicable. Once applicable, always applicable. Once Indian accounting standard is applicable to you, it shall be applicable to you always. Sir, A Limited has a turnover of 501 CR. It has a subsidiary with 2 lakh as turnover. 5th June 2016, it ceased to be the subsidiary of A Limited. Is Indian accounting standard applicable to the subsidiary? 1st April 2016. Was Indian accounting standard applicable to A Limited? Yes, sir. 
if applicable to a limited who else is required to follow indian accounting standards sir it's subsidiary holding jv associate so was the subsidiary required to follow yes sir 5th june once applicable always applicable remember my friend once indian accounting standard is applicable it will be always applicable so it can be a hurting situation for the company but yes they'll have to follow we'll move toward the third timeline first april 2017 all listed companies irrespective of their net worth if you are listed or in the process of being listed indian accounting standard is applicable and all unlisted company with net worth more than 250 cr more than 250 cr holding subsidiary jv associate again last audited balance sheet 1st april 2018 the new timeline that has been added we are talking about non banking financial companies now all banking companies 1st april 2018 indian accounting standard applicable all banking company irrespective of turnover all insurance company irrespective of turnover and not applicable to rural regional rural enterprises regional rural banks and cooperative banks urban cooperative banks still out of the ambit still not in the timeline non banking financial companies whether listed or not having net worth more than 500 crore applicable from 1st april 2018 so nbfcs we have to see a net worth of 500 cr scheduled commercial banks all irrespective of net worth insurance companies all irrespective of net worth their holding subsidiary jv associate so this is going to be a very big timeline in the coming future because this is something that is going to generate immense revenue for the chartered accountants 1st april 2019 the last timeline all listed and nbfcs all unlisted nbfcs having net worth more than 250 crore so 250 and 500 is the same story that we see holding subsidiary jv associate i hope the concept is clear this audited balance sheet is clear <coughs> and there is one more thing we don't need to check consolidated balance sheet for the turnover we will only see the separate balance sheet for the applicability of indian accounting standard don't consolidate and check that because consolidated balance sheet has a net worth more than 500 crore we are going to make indian accounting standard applicable please only in separate balance sheets okay so we will move ahead we will see some more points now there is a huge list of carve outs in your notes i am not going to talk about these carve outs right now but we are going to definitely discuss all these carve outs carve outs means difference between indian accounting standards and international accounting standard lots of students call me and tell me sir what do we have to study carvens carve outs comparisons they don't know what exactly these terminologies mean please my friend try to understand indian accounting standards and ias international accounting standard the differences are split into two part carve in carve out if the difference leads to accounting treatment difference accounting mismatch they are carve outs if the difference doesn't lead to accounting mismatch they are carve ins sir what do you mean by no accounting mismatch see we call the statement of financial position balance sheet as a uh, the, the what you call as balance sheet under international accounting standard we call it as a statement of financial position so this is a carve in we make a an annual statement they make a 52 week statement this is a carven i hope this is clear but there is a huge list of carve out now you don't know what indian accounting standards are how can i discuss carve outs right now so after completing all the indian accounting standards all the accounting standards we are going to discuss this page of carve out okay then there are differences between accounting standards and indian accounting standard that you need to know so as india is differences and we are going to see even the practical questions related to the same so that the concepts are absolutely clear on what accounting standard says about and what the indian accounting standard talks about okay sir why was india required to follow indian accounting standards as i told you international accounting standard the basic motive is all over the world same set of accounting principles so that multiple books of accounts are not required to be paid, prepared why not if india is also going global why shouldn't we also prepare same set of accounts all over the world now when we talk about the modi government going play global globally everywhere asking people please invest in india made in india please invest in india please invest in india 
the first thing the investor will say is we don't understand your financial statement what is this AS1, AS2, AS3, AS4 we don't have such standards we know only international accounting standard we need reliable standards to be followed your accounting standards we don't feel to be reliable so the first thing is reliability is gone when I talk about the accounting standard the chartered accountants of India knows how to frame them accordingly according to their words and move ahead so the first thing that was required to be made very strict was Indian accounting standard has to be followed it's been so many years international accounting standards were required to be uh, made in India Congress government never let it happen Modi government immediately made it compulsory no you will have to follow Indian accounting standard there were chartered accountant top body chartered who said no we are not prepared no we are not prepared if you are not prepared we will give the power to the CS and CMA ICA I quietly accepted ok fine we are ready to accept it we will move ahead so we are moving ahead with this and the need is that so that the foreign investors invest in India they try to understand they will understand what our uh, how our financial statements have been made how the companies are being made Indian accounting standard and lots of compliances lots of disclosures that are required to be made we are going to study it over the period so I hope the concept till here is clear to you okay so we'll move ahead and we'll start with the first accounting standard AS1